Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, we all know what is happening around the country right now, and House Republicans are here to do something about it. Over the last few weeks, we've, we've seen absolute lawlessness and chaos on college and university campuses across America. On, on Wednesday of last week, I and a handful of my colleagues traveled to Columbia University, which became the epicenter in the last couple of weeks, to meet with Jewish students there and to see the madness that's happening there for ourselves. The anti-Jewish hatred was appalling. And we heard firsthand from students who are living in, in fear because of the pro-Hamas agitators who have taken over their campus. We met with a large number of Jewish students before we had our, our press event there and before we met with the university president. And they told us the harrowing tales of what they're having to face. It's, it's not right. The president, uh, Shafiq, it was clear that she has lost control of her campus and she needs to step down. The first and most obvious responsibility of a university administrator is to ensure the safety and security of their students. If an administrator cannot ensure that, they have, they have missed their first assignment. We need to find people who can do that. Just last night there at Columbia, students barricaded themselves inside one of the academic buildings. Where they fought with the maintenance crew there. They assaulted students. They broke through windows, destroyed property, hung in intifada banners from the building. And the law enforcement was nowhere to be found. We're told that the NYPD is outside the perimeter of the campus, but they have not been invited in. And they won't go until they are invited. What are university officials waiting on? What do they need to see before they stand up to these terrorist sympathizers? And that is exactly what they are. What's worse, though, is that Columbia's choice to ignore the safety of their Jewish students and appease anti-Semites has inspired even more hate-filled protests to pop up across the country. And what we're seeing right now is people wave Hezbollah flags and, and Hamas flags, their homemade signs supporting what happened on October 7th. It's outrageous. Hamas endorsed the protest at Columbia University just about uh, two hours before we walked out on the steps to have our press event on Wednesday. They're proudly chanting things like death to America and, and profanity and, and hate-filled slogans. And this is utterly despicable, and it cannot be accepted in this country. Anti-Semitism is a virus. And because the administration and woke university presidents aren't stepping in, we're seeing it spread. We have to act. And House Republicans will speak to this fateful moment with moral clarity. We really wish those in the White House would do the same. We will not allow anti-Semitism to thrive on campus, and we will hold these universities accountable for their failure to protect Jewish students on campus. And that's why today we're here to announce a housewide effort to crack down on anti-Semitism on college campuses. Nearly every committee here has a role to play in these efforts to stop the madness that has ensued. Joining me today are my colleagues in leadership, as well as committee chairs of the Committees of Appropriate Jurisdiction, and we're going to elaborate on what we'll be doing as part of this, this whole of the House effort. The federal government plays, plays a critical role in higher education, and we will use all the tools available to us to address this scourge. With that, I'll, I'll turn it over uh, first to our House Republican Chair, Elise Stefanik, who's been doing extraordinary work on this issue for a number of weeks. Elise? Oh, mm -hmm. grab that. Thank you so much to our speaker. I want to thank the speaker as well as Chairwoman Fox for visiting Columbia University's campus last week to highlight moral leadership that is sorely needed and lacking when it comes to these university presidents. I also want to thank the speaker for making this a priority for all of House Republicans. It is clear that Jewish families across this country, Americans across this country are looking for moral clarity and we are going to deliver where these higher education institutions have failed. As this Speaker said last night at Columbia, America watched in disgust as President Shafiq allowed an anti-Semitic pro-terrorist mob to storm and seize an academic building, holding faculty inside, flying pro-Hamas signs and damaging property. Joe Biden, far left Democrat governors like my home state in New York and morally bankrupt university leaders have allowed this moral rot of anti-Semitism to fester, refusing to enforce the laws and refusing to ensure the safety of Jewish students. And it's not just Columbia. This is a moral rot that has taken root across American higher education institutions. At Yale University, a Jewish student was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag. 
at the University of Southern California, graduation was canceled due to the university being unable to guarantee the safety of students. Jewish students were barricaded at the library at Cooper Union. At my alma mater, Harvard University, a Palestinian flag was hoisted at University Hall where the American flag always flies in clear violation of university policies. There are dozens of these anti-Semitic encampments across the country. These mobs are breaking university rules, leading to the targeting and harassment of Jewish students and faculty. In December, at a hearing chaired by our Education and Workforce Chairwoman Virginia Fox, we exposed just how ingrained anti-Semitism has become at America's so-called elite institutions in higher education. When I question the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate your university's code of conduct? One after the other after the other said it depends on the context. And the world heard it is, thou, it is now the most viewed congressional testimony in history. Eight days ago, I was the first member of Congress to demand that Columbia President Shafiq resign for her failure to disband the anti-Semitic mob consuming Columbia's campus and her failure to ensure the safety of Columbia's Jewish students. Instead, she negotiated with these self-proclaimed terrorists, allowing their anti-Semitic mob to grow. Enough is enough. It is time to restore, restore law and order, academic integrity, and moral decency to America's higher education institutions. Joe Biden has been deafeningly silent. So I want to thank again the speaker as well as all of our chairs who will ensure this is a top priority for House Republicans. There can be no moral equivalency. It is time to send a clear message to the world that anti-Semitism has no place in America. The world is indeed watching. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our whip, Tom Emmer. Thank you, Lisa. Our House Republican Conference is here today to deliver a message to the pro-terrorist anti-Semites taking over our college campuses. We're here to deliver a message to the university administrators who have chosen to be complicit in these movements for hate rather than taking action. And we're here to deliver a message to Hamas, Iran, and members of the squad, including my Minnesota colleague Ilhan Omar, who have all endorsed these anti-Semitic protests that enough is enough. Accountability is here. Our college campuses should never be breeding grounds for anti-Semitism. Yet that is exactly what they have become. Why? Because of university administrators who have refused to protect their Jewish students because of faculty members who have enabled the wave of anti-Semitic violence, because of, because of an administration that has tried to play both sides of this issue, and because of far-left members of Congress who are applauding anti-Semitism on college campuses. In other words, it's because we have a bunch of adults in a room who are refusing to be the adults in the room. While no one else is standing up to lead during this pivotal moment in history, House Republicans will. I want to thank Speaker Johnson and our committee chairs for providing, providing much needed accountability on an issue that has been met with a disturbing amount of indifference and even encouragement from the people who are supposed to keep our students safe. The world is watching to see how we respond, and I, for one, am grateful to be part of a conference that will be on the right side of history. And with that, I turn it over to our leader, Steve Scalise. Thank you, Whip. Since October 7th, when a terrorist organization backed by Iran, known as Hamas, invaded Iran, invaded Israel, you have seen a growing wave of anti-Semitism. Obviously, in Israel, we saw a war declared on them. And Israel said, we're going to defend our state. And you saw, by the way, these colleagues here and so many of my House colleagues stand and say, we support Israel's right to defend themselves as a Jewish state. But something else alarming that you started to see happen after that is when we started taking action here. And that is when you started seeing anti-Semitism grow here in the United States, here on college campuses, and in fact, here on the House floor by some of our colleagues on the other side. And we've been speaking out against it vocally. This is an area where you have to learn from the mistakes of history. 
Because if you don't learn from the mistakes of history, we're all doomed to repeat it. Let's not forget what happened in the lead up to World War II. And so when you see some of the things that these, uh, whether you call them terrorist sympathizers, anarchists, they're organized. When they show up and they all have the same kind of tents, when they all are from out of state in many of these places where they're showing up, it's an organized mob trying to ensue chaos and breed anti-Semitism. And if we don't stand up against it every place we see it, and more importantly, if we don't call on those people whose main job is to protect the people that they're tasked with looking over, look at these college presidents, you know, and, and we're asking all of our committee chairs to look into the billions of federal taxpayer dollars that go to these universities. And part of the reason that goes to these universities is that so they can provide a good education for their students, so they can provide a safe environment for their students. And if these presidents won't provide that safe environment, then those university presidents need to go. They need to resign. And we've been very vocal about calling on them to step down as well, because they're not only failing their students, but they're disgracing the universities. Many of these universities that have a long and storied reputations that are being tarnished, uh, many of them permanently, uh, students and parents that won't even send their kids to these schools anymore because their kids are no longer safe. And we're seeing it play out today on many campuses across the nation. But here in this house, with our majority, we're going to continue to hold these people accountable for the money that they get and for the failures uh, that they're ensuing. Uh, if you look at what happened and at least touched on it a little earlier, over a billion people watched that video that she talked about. Over a billion people watched a congressional hearing. I'd like to think there's interest that high in every congressional hearing we have. But America's watching, and even more than that, the world is watching. And so we need to continue to show the moral clarity between right and wrong and call out anti-Semitism and attacks on Jewish people and anybody else for their faith as for what it is and stand up against the people that are doing it. And leading the charge, the person who had the first hearing in her committee months ago, uh, is the chair of the Education and Workforce Committee, somebody who's tough going after the people that are doing all of this, Virginia Fox. Thanks, Steve. I want to thank the speaker also for making this an all-of-the-house issue. It is an all-the-house issue. It's a, an issue for our country. As Republican leaders, we have a clear message for mealy-mouthed, spineless college leaders. Congress will not tolerate your dereliction of duty to your Jewish students. American universities are officially put on notice that we have come to take our universities back. I applaud the speaker for expanding the Committee on Education and Workforce's ongoing investigation into a Congress-wide initiative. No stone must go unturned while buildings are being defaced, campus greens are being captured, or graduations are being ruined. College is not a park for play-acting juveniles or a battleground for radical activists. Everyone affiliated with these universities will receive a healthy dose of reality. Actions have consequences. One of those consequences is, is that I have given notice to appear to, use, to Yale, UCLA, and Michigan to appear before the Education and Workforce Committee on May 23rd for a hearing on their handling of the, these most recent outrages. I look forward to working with my fellow House leaders on additional action to address these riots, and I yield to Frank Lucas. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And thank you, Speaker Johnson, for taking action on this important issue. Right now, Jewish students facing harassment, discrimination, and in some case, violence at our colleges and universities. This anti-Semitism is unacceptable, and it goes against who we are as Americans. We entrust our colleges and universities with conducting scientific research and educating the next generation of leaders and innovators. They can't do that when students are being driven off of campus by shocking displays of anti-Semitism. 
What's more, universities that can't protect their students are not in compliance with their funding obligations through the National Science Foundation. Funding through NSF accounts for about 25% of all federal support to America's college and universities for basic research. As a part of the conditions of receiving taxpayer dollars through the NSF, universities must comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, and national origin. Schools like Columbia and UC Berkeley annually receive more than $50 million each in NSF grants. It's time we review whether universities that allow the harassment, assault, or intimidation of their Jewish students are in compliance with their federal obligations. We'll be looking to conduct oversight on this issue very soon. Thank you for your time here today, and I now turn to my colleague, Chairwoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers. I echo my colleagues' words. I appreciate the leadership of Speaker Mike Johnson in bringing us together. We must do everything that we can to ensure the safety and well-being of all students, faculty, and staff, including those of Jewish heritage and faith. <coughs> With broad jurisdiction over energy and public health, the Energy and Commerce Committee oversees agencies that dole out massive amounts of taxpayer-funded research grants. For example, in fiscal year 2023, the National Institutes of Health have given around $682 million to Columbia University, $409 million to Harvard, $508 million to USC, which just canceled their graduation over fears of violence and protest. $73 million to George Washington University just down the street. We will be increasing our oversight of institutions that have received public funding and cracking down on those who are in violation of the Civil Rights Act. I'll leave you all with this. Imagine being a Jewish American, knowing that part of your hard-earned paycheck is going to fund an anti-Semitic professor's research while they threaten students and actively indoctrinate and radicalize the next generation. Pleased to yield now to the chairman, the great chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan. Thank you, Kathy. <clears throat> Earlier today, the Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee sent two letters, one to Secretary Blinken, one to Secretary Mayorkas, asking three fundamental questions, questions we as Republicans in the Congress want to know, and maybe more importantly, questions I think the American people want to have the answers to. First, how many students on a visa have engaged in the radical activity we've seen now day after day on college campuses? How many have engaged in this activity endorsing or espousing terrorist activity on a college campus? Question two, if you know that number, have you, the State Department, have you asked the State Department to revoke the visas, to revoke their visas? And then third, and maybe most importantly to Secretary Mayorkas, if you've done that, if you know that answer, have you started removal proceedings? Those are the questions that are in front of the Judiciary Committee that we want the answers to. Remember, on September 30th, 2021, Secretary Mayorkas issued his guidelines for immigration enforcement. And he said in there that national security threats are a reason, of course, to remove people from this country. So the fundamental question, the overriding question is real simple. Are individuals advocating for the destruction of our dearest and closest ally, the state of Israel, and engaged in this anti-Semitic behavior, is that a national security threat? We think it is, and we think we need to deserve, the American people deserve, the answers to those three fundamental questions. I now yield to the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Smith. Let's start out with just saying these college and universities enjoy generous, generous benefits under the U.S. tax code. They have a responsibility to the American taxpayer to ensure that they are fulfilling their educational requirements as tax-exempt organizations, as well as protecting students from intimidation, harassment, and violence. Sadly, too many colleges and universities have failed to hold up their end of the bargain. They have failed the test. They have allowed anti-Semitism to flourish on their campuses. Their inaction has emboldened the mobs who threaten Jewish students. At the Ways and Means Committee, we have been investigating the issue for months. 
In a hearing last November, we examined the nexus between anti-Semitism, tax-exempt universities, and terror financing networks. During that hearing, we heard vivid testimony from a Jewish student from Cornell about how she feared for her life amid the death threats being made to Jewish students on the campus while the university leadership was telling folks they shouldn't be worried. We've sent letters to university leaders demanding information on what disciplinary action, if any, that they have taken against those whose anti-Semitic activity violates campus policy. We've called on them to disclose any donations or funding they have received from foreign governments as well. Our investigation has already produced more than 1,500 pages of documents that we are now actively reviewing. We will not stop until we get answers, until Jewish students can feel safe, and until these universities are held accountable. I'm pleased to uh, introduce my good friend, Chairman Jamie Comer. The failure of Columbia University to address the pro-Hamas mob is an appalling lack of leadership. Now we are witnessing copycat anti-Israel protests pop up at universities across the country. These radical protests threatening violence against Jews are anything but organic. It appears global elites are funding these hateful protests and pop up tent cities. These are the same groups that fund other radical agendas, including diminishing America's energy production and pushing soft on crime policies that harm the American people. The House Oversight Committee will follow the money trail, expose it to the American people, and seek to hold bad actors funding hate accountable. I want to thank Speaker Johnson and House leadership for coordinating this, and the House Oversight Committee looks forward to working with other committees uh, to investigate this serious problem. I yield back to Speaker Johnson. So you've just heard from the chairs of uh, a number of the most powerful committees on Capitol Hill. You had oversight. You heard from the chair of Judiciary, Science, Space, and Technology, the House Education Workforce Committee, uh, Ways and Means. Uh, there, there's, there's more. And you'll, you'll hear the leadership team uh, deeply involved in all this as well. We've got to get down to the bottom of it. We have to root it out. Congress has two really important responsibilities that will be fulfilled in this exercise. One is oversight. And, and that's a, a job that we have, and also, of course, the use of the power of the purse. We need accountability for those who cannot maintain order, will not protect innocent students on their campus, and uh, will not uh, get on top of the situation. So with that, I'll take a few questions. Mr. Speaker, yeah. you took the unusual step for a speaker last week of going to the scene of the news, the campus of Columbia University. Is this a practice that we can expect to see more frequently from you, getting out to the Beltway and touring controversial sites uh, for yourself? And do you challenge President Biden to visit Columbia as well? Yeah, I do. Um, in, in fact, um, after we left the, the campus, uh, I made a call to senior policy advisors in the White House. The president was on the road, as I was, and we did not connect immediately. But I've encouraged him to go and see it for himself. I will go where the where we're needed. We, we felt like there was a vacuum of leadership there and that it was an important moment for us as the House, for the Speaker of the House, who represents the whole body, to speak with clarity and conviction and consistency about what this is. Moral clarity is the phrase that you've heard from us. You'll continue to hear it. This is not a gray issue. There is right and wrong here. There is good and evil, in my view, and we need to call it out for what it is. I think this is a time for decisive leadership. We're living in fateful moments here. We do not have time for weakness. And anyone who has a platform or an elected office, I believe, has a duty and a responsibility to speak to it. So, yes, we went. We faced the crowd. We told them the truth. They didn't want to hear that. But that's okay. The American people need to, and we'll continue to do that. Speaker Johnson, um, Congressman Bacon is floating a censure resolution against uh, Congresswoman Elon Omar for the comments she made about some Jewish students being, um, obviously, uh, pro-genocidal. Um, would you support a uh, censure resolution against the Congresswoman? I, I think that speech is detestable. She's on exactly the wrong side of the issue. I haven't spoken with uh, Congressman Bacon about uh, about the, the censure resolution, but we'll look at it. Look, uh, we're at desperate times call for desperate measures. I, I think when you're calling for the extermination of a race of people, which is exactly what many in the crowd are calling for, the reason Hamas endorsed the, the, the uh, protest at Columbia University is because they were using Hamas talking points. They're talking, when they say, when they chant from the river to the sea, you understand they're talking about the elimination 
occupation of the state of Israel. They, they, were, they were putting posters onto uh, placards and, and uh, telephone poles and trees around campus that is actual imagery that the Nazis used in the 1930s. They're literally the same symbols and uh, messages they're putting up. This is not the free expression of ideas. This is not the use of the, the free marketplace of ideas for debate that would be healthy on a university campus that's envisioned for a place of higher education. It, it is the opposite. This is threatening, violent, inciting speech, and it's dangerous. And it is acknowledged by university administrators to be dangerous, as evidenced by their cancellation of classes. They told Jewish students it wasn't safe for them to come to campus. And, and then the, they came back with the hybrid model, which made it even worse. So it, it, ostensibly, if you're non-Jewish, you can attend classes and come and take your final exams on campus. But if you're Jewish, you might need to stay in your apartment. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it's really crazy what it's come to. And we need, Ken, we need clarity on the issue for leaders at the university level, at the local, state and federal level to step up and say enough is enough. we got to bring order to the chaos. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Speaker, uh, you talked about anti-Semitism on the world stage. We've seen it with the United Nations. We've also seen it now with the International Criminal Court. Can you elaborate a little bit? You put out a statement about the International Criminal Court bringing charge, possible charges against Israeli leaders. Yeah, it's a, it's a very dangerous development. You're, you're seeing an, an all-out assault on the state of Israel and uh, those of, of Jewish heritage and, and ethnicity. And it, it's unacceptable. The ICC, for them to take the step to suggest they would, they would issue a, a, a warrant for the prime minister of the country who's in the midst of a war for the very survival of his nation is unconscionable to us. And I, and I will tell you, I spoke within the last hour to, to uh, Secretary Blinken about this issue, and he confirmed that the position of the White House is our position as well. I'm glad to, uh, that they are affirming that, and I suspect they will do that publicly later today. They are calling for the ICC to stand down. Mr. Khan, who is in charge of that, is, uh, has, has hinted that he might be issuing uh, the warrants uh, to be executed, and they'd better not do that, because that would unsettle the situation. It would be a terrible sign on the world stage, and I think that it would make us as a nation respond in kind to the ICC. I think there would be appropriate sanctions. I think that there uh, is a bipartisan, I think, um, a group of senators and House members who would move expeditiously. And uh, we might just turn the table on the ICC. They better be careful. You can hear that straight from me. Yeah, back row, back row. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I want to know what kind of things you guys would need to see or changes you need to see from these universities to kind of know that they're on the right track by your description on yeah campus. how about ending the encampments on campus the occupation of buildings the destruction of property this isn't hard we sat down with the president of columbia across her uh, her, her conference table and, and and told her that you know we, we have no no, no intent here other than to bring order to the chaos, and they have a responsibility to do it. They are breaking the law. They are destroying property. They are threatening fellow students. This is not who we are in America. So get control. Look, if you want to have vigorous debate about foreign policy issues or, you know, anything else, do that. Sponsor it. Open up the auditorium and have kids from different viewpoints come in respectfully and have debate. That's what the university campus should be for, but not this. And if anybody is equivocating and they don't understand where the line is, we can help them understand that. This is pretty simple. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, about the October 7th attack, the former president said in an interview published today that Israel was not prepared for what happened on October 7th and that Benjamin Netanyahu has been rightfully criticized for that as well. Do you agree with that? the decisions that were made, I think the October 7th uh, attack surprised the entire world. Uh, I, I think that was true of our intelligence community as well. And, you know, Israel is a very close ally of ours. In, in our view, it's the most precious ally that we have, the only democracy in the Middle East. Um, there's a lot of reasons that we stand by Israel and always have and always must. Um, but, but I think that there was a I think they were very, obviously, very secretive about what they were plotting and planning, and it's a, it's a warning sign to other nations and other freedom-loving people around the world. Terrorists uh, uh, never sleep, and evil doesn't rest, and they are plotting these things right now. And, I, you know, it's, as an aside, we're deeply concerned, as are leaders in the current administration, I think, about what we might be facing here on our own shores. With that wide open border that's been open for over three years, we know we have dangerous persons and suspects on the terrorism watch list that have been apprehended at the border. We don't know how many of them actually come in. We don't know if there are terrorist cells set up in a community near you. Um, but 
FBI Director Christopher Wray testified now on, on multiple occasions to Congress that all the red lights are flashing. This is a dangerous time. We all need to walk circumspectly. We need to be watching out for this, and that's why it's so important to call out the evil when we see it. We cannot allow this stuff to grow and fester in the country. It is anti-Semitism, as I said, is a virus, and it will spread if it's not stamped out. Mr. Speaker, yeah. um, the, 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 the problem of anti-Semitism on campuses is acute, but the question that's begged here is why isn't this a whole of, of anti-Semitism approach? There's a, there was a neo-Nazi uh, march the other day in Charleston just three days ago. A lot of the, threat, the physical threats to Jews the most acute physical threats continue to come from the far right, from people who embrace the great, great replacement theory, which has been echoed even by some people in your own caucus. Uh, why, why not extend this to uh, make this a whole of anti-Semitism investigation and thereby not be accused of making this partisan? This is not, not partisan at all. Um, we'll call this out anywhere that it occurs. But what's captured the nation's attention is what is happening on the university campuses because it should be so easily controlled. You have radical fringe groups on the right and left who, who do crazy things and say crazy things. And it's up to local and state law enforcement typically uh, to get a handle on that. If they go out in a public street, you'll see law enforcement uh, uh, respond appropriately. What's happening on the campuses, though, especially these private and the Ivy League universities, is that they're not allowing law enforcement to come in. They're not inviting them to do their job and bring order to the chaos. Those are the policy changes that we're demanding. And if they don't, don't correct this quickly, uh, you will see Congress respond in kind. You're going to see funding sources begin to dry up. You're going to see every uh, level of accountability that we can muster. And that's what this work of these committees and these fine chairpersons are going to be involved in. And uh, we'll say stay tuned and you'll see much more. Thanks for the time today. Have you spoken yeah. to President Biden about this effort? 